sir we are live now sir please start hello everybody it is a great pleasure to have everyone here for the launch of the official diploma programs from iit madras i am dr vignesh muthuvijaya an associate professor in the department of biotechnology and one of the coordinators for mptel and iit madras online programs i'll be your host today without further ado let's start the function with a welcome address from professor pratap professor pratap haridas is a professor in the department of metallurgical and materials engineering iit madras he is also currently the dean of academic courses he used to be the coordinator of nptel and iit madras online pro programs before he took over as dean academic courses i request professor pratap to welcome our esteemed guests and everyone gathered here for this event Thank you, Professor Vignesh. Uh, uh, good morning to everyone. Uh, it's really a pleasure to be here and to uh, welcome all of you to this uh, morning's program. Uh, in particular, I welcome our uh, chief guest, uh, Professor Anil Sahasrabuddin, uh, Chairman of uh, AICT. Uh, he has been a staunch supporter of the online uh, initiatives uh, at IIT Madras and uh, has uh, really uh, assisted us, guided us uh, in many of these uh, programs. Uh, I also welcome uh, Mr. Firmana Aroki. Uh, senior vice president and head of uh, education training and assessment uh, infosys limited uh, he has also you know actively been uh, a supporter of our epitel program uh, with has shown a lot of interest and uh, support for our uh, online and degree program uh, and that has really uh, helped us uh, shape the manner in which these programs have uh, evolved uh, i also welcome our director professor baskar ramurthy uh, our director iit madras um, he has been our uh, guiding light uh, through these uh, programs because uh, many of them have come from nascent stage uh, where we had to uh, plan several things uh, and anticipate uh, several uh, you know possible potential uh, challenges that we would have to deal with. And uh, his uh, you know, immense experience uh, in these uh, aspects has greatly assisted uh, us to uh, do this in a successful manner. Uh, once again, I welcome all of you, and I hope uh, you have a great uh, morning uh, here through this program and also uh, enjoy the. The benefits of this program. Thank you. <clears throat> I think there's a minor. Uh, I think there is net connectivity problem. Vignesh uh, yeah. needs to be off actually, so you you can take over. <laughs> yeah, I think I might have to do. Uh, but I can see Vignesh. Uh, Vignesh is ah, it's coming back. Now he's coming back. It's back. Yeah. I yeah. can do yeah. slight sharing from now on also. So, uh, so, so sorry about that brief technical uh, slip. So, so uh, my name is Andrew. I'm one of the coordinators for the online programs. I'm a faculty in electrical engineering department at IIT Madras. Let me walk you through uh, the salient aspects of the two diplomas uh, for which direct admission is being launched uh, today. Some of you may be aware of the BSc program that we have in both these areas, and that's been running for more than a year now. We have had the foundation plus the diploma that's been open uh, so far. Uh, of course, if you want a degree, you have to do the foundation as well. But there is lots of interest in both from the students and from working professionals on the diplomas alone. So now the diplomas contain the skill aspects of both uh, data science and programming. Let me walk you through uh, the main courses that you would do uh, both of, in both these areas. So, uh, so this is, of course, a diploma from IIT Madras. So what would be unique about it is you won't just learn the tools. Of course, you'll learn the tools that you need for succeeding today, but you'll also learn the foundations and the reasons why these two tools were developed so that as technologies change in the future, you don't have to keep relearning everything. You would be able to quickly adapt. So that's the strength that an IIT type of education brings in. And you can see the courses are built in that way. So for instance, you would know about uh, computational thinking, the basics of programming, and then you would learn the tools that you need today for uh, uh, developing applications. But the same thing in the data science part, you learn the statistical foundations, you learn the business aspects of things, what kind of decisions, what kind of questions to ask from data, and then model that, and then answer questions uh, that are relevant for today. So it's really a complete package, having all, 
every single element that you need today to be a successful data scientist and an application developer. Now, the fee structure has been designed so that everyone can benefit. Whatever your background is, uh, this fee easily, I mean, I think a typical six month diploma in this area costs several lakhs. And of course, we are a centrally funded institute. We have our own reasons for why we want to pitch this program for everybody. In particular, we are pitching it to anyone with a wide range of backgrounds. Even if your family income is less than one lakh per annum, you can get to do this program for a fraction of a cost. It would just be like 15 or 16,000 uh, for which you can earn a diploma. I think really it's possible. So financially, there should be no real limitation. We also have CSR support for scholarships and all that. Okay, so this is the program. Uh, and from a high level, let me talk a little bit about entry into the diploma program. Of course, I said a lot of positive things about what IIT will give you, but there's also a qualifier process. This is a very simple process. We've simplified it a lot to make sure that people can get in. Now, uh, for being a successful application developer and a programmer, uh, most people will tell you who really know the foundations will tell you is all you need is a sense of programming logic and you don't need any other fundamentals in, in, in any other area. So that's what we will test in our qualifier process. We'll test English, basic mathematics and aptitude. Uh, how to prepare for these things, we will share material with you so that you can be very well prepared. Now, data science needs a little bit more. It needs uh, some statistics. It needs some basics of Python and then mathematics. Once again, we will give you all the material that you would need. Uh, these are basic ideas, sort of at the 12th standard level uh, that you need to be comfortable with. And you can prepare for it and appear for the in-person qualifier exam that we'll hold on December 12th. Uh, you do have time for preparing for that. And we expect to commence classes uh, on 27th of December. Once again, the application is very, very competitively priced. We, we just don't want this to be a barrier for anyone who's interested. And there are rebates for uh, different communities as well. So this is the entry process. Uh, what do you think, uh, what, what we think are the main highlights of the program and possible job roles? Uh, you can earn a diploma aggressively in eight months or very you know, relaxed, sort of more realistically in about a year, uh, one year of work and you can get a diploma. You learn uh, full stack development in the programming diploma, all the important things that you would need to build successful applications today. You, you know how, you know, it's quite a lot of technology out there. All of that you get very good exposure to and you have really good job roles uh, waiting for you at the end of a diploma in programming. Now on the data science part, once again, uh, I mentioned all that we cover uh, if, in analytics and statistics and machine learning, visualization, all the important libraries, it's all hands on. Uh, I know there are a lot of lab sort of courses, uh, integrated projects. Every course you do will have like a you know capstone project at the end of it. So you'll have a, a good resume at the end of uh, these diplomas. Okay. So for more information, you can go to diploma.iitm.ac.in and the last day to apply, of course, is uh, 15th of November. Now, I, I want to close with uh, what you can get uh, at the end of it. Uh, what you get at the end of it is really a prestigious diploma. What we believe uh, very few people uh, along with you would be getting it. If you, you know, no, it's not really, uh, it's, it's something that's official and approved by the Senate of IIT Madras. So the program, the structure, the output, all of that is monitored by the Senate directly. So this is, a, this is really a prestigious degree to have in your hands, a diploma to have at the end of the day in your hands. Okay, so hopefully that gave you a few glimpses of what is possible in this diploma, what we cover, what we aim to do is to really take high quality skilling in large scale to as many people as possible in India. And that we hope to achieve through this program. I hope that was clear. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I believe Vignesh is here and he can take over at this yeah. point. Vignesh, are you here? Yeah, I'm back. Uh, okay. okay, over to you, Vignesh. Yeah, thank you. So, uh, thanks, uh, Andrew, for presenting the various aspects of the program so, and giving us a brief introduction on what this program is all about. So, uh, next, we would like to introduce our chief guest for today's function, uh, Professor. Anil Sahasrabhade. So give me a second. Let me just share my screen. Oh, sorry. Vignesh, you can skip it. <laughs> no. <Yeah>. So, <laughs> sorry. Uh, yeah, I was assuming that it was being shared already. So sorry. Uh, so Professor Anil Sahasrabhade is um, currently the uh, chair chairman of AICTE. 
and uh, he is a professor of mechanical engineering at uh, IIT and IIT Guwahati. He had uh, has held several important academic and research and administrative positions at IASC Bangalore, uh, Tata Consulting Engineers, Northeastern in Regional Institute of Science and Technology, uh, and IIT Guwahati. Prior to joining as IASCTE chairman, he was also uh, serving as the director of College of Engineering Pune, and uh, he is the chairman of Basic Scientific Research Empowered Committee of UGC and Swayam Board. He is also a fellow of IC ISTE, IET, Institution of Engineers, and INAE. Uh, he has been bestowed with several awards, uh, which include the Maha Entrepreneur Award of 2011 from uh, Praj Industries, Jeevan Gaur Praskar, a Lifetime Achievement Award from MIT World Peace University, Pune in 2019, and Mahatma Gandhi Leadership Award from Indian Achievers Forum and CSR Times in uh, 2019. Now we request uh, Professor Anil Sahasrabhade to launch this uh, program and uh, so uh, we request him to launch this event. Just give me a second. Sorry. Uh, am I supposed to click something? <laughs> you can just announce that this uh, is launched uh, and then we will uh, launch uh, the video. Extremely delighted to launch two diploma programs, diploma in programming and diploma in data science being uh, run by IIT Madras. So I think uh, we have declared that it is now launched and the students can start registering for the program. Thank you, Professor Anil Sasarvade. Here is the launch of the uh, portal. Yeah. Now we can see the building the career as, at an institute of eminence. You know, this is very important. Students will get empowering moments from out of this. Thank you uh, for launching this program. And then now uh, let us, um, sorry, that's going. So uh, I welcome Professor Bhaskar Ramurthy and uh, the director of IIT Madras uh, for, uh, thank you for attending this event. Uh, so he, uh, Professor Bhaskar is a um, professor in the Department of Electrical Engineering. He took over as the director of IIT Madras in, uh, 2011, he is one of the institute professors uh, at IIT Madras, which is one of the highest honors that can be awarded to a faculty member at IIT Madras. He is also a fellow of the uh, Indian National Academy of Engineering and the Institute of Electrical and Electronic Engineers, uh, IEEE. He is also an honorary fellow of the International Medical Sciences Academy. He has received several awards and honors from elite institutions, including the India Semiconductor Association Techno Visionary Award of the year 2011 and the Doyens of Madras Award for the year 2014. He had also received the RWTH Honorary Fellow Award from RWTH Aachen University, Germany in 2020. I request Professor Bhaskar Ramurthy to share a few words in this occasion. Thank you, Vignesh. Uh, uh, for all those who are part uh, viewing this program, uh, you know, we must apologize. Uh, both Professor Sahasra Bude and I don't look like the photographs that have been flashed. I think both those photographs were taken years ago. So, uh, uh, but, 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 Bhaskar, you still look the same young. Okay. okay, just joking. So, uh, very, very, I'm delighted to be part of this program today because um, this, these online uh, degree programs, diploma programs that uh, IIT Madras has been uh, launching since last year. Uh, we sort of, uh, you know, started uh, thinking about all this and planning for this uh, three years ago. Uh, and we, we were uh, thrilled when the new education policy actually uh, more or less affirmed that whatever we were planning was what uh, one of the things that should be done uh, in the country. Uh, multiple entry points to programs, multiple exit points. It almost looked like uh, it was, uh, you know, the policy had tailor-made uh, 
the recommendations based on what we were doing. But so it said, gave us some some confidence that we were on the right track. And uh, and then we of course chose uh, areas uh, which are first amenable to online education. Uh, you know, uh, doesn't require um, sort of you know physical hands-on uh, training. And we also also areas where uh, the employment potential is high. And uh, so the programming, data science, uh, the diplomas, the degree, uh, all of these are aimed at uh, trying to meet a huge unmet demand in the country with high quality. So we also are figuring out how to do this, how to use the online medium with no quality. I mean, we have really no uh, desire not to compromise on quality and hopefully even find that we're doing better uh, than sometimes, sometimes face-to-face -face education. Uh, so, so basically, uh, the... Uh, uh, aim is really very high. We want to uh, we want to give uh, very high quality uh, diplomas and degrees. We want students to go out uh, with very thorough knowledge and also find uh, ready employment. So this is our aim, and uh, we are fairly confident the way things have been going in the last one and a half years. Despite the pandemic, uh, you know we've had a lot of disruption because this, as you can see, there are in-person exams to be conducted every month. And uh, that means in, in centers across the country, in our uh, foundation program that has been running for one year, we have, we have students from every part of the country, every state, every union territory, uh, and uh, almost except two, I think. So except two union territories. So we have to conduct this exam at the same time everywhere, which in these times of lockdown have, they have been very difficult. So despite all that, I think they managed it. Uh, students have done uh, extraordinarily well. People have some students have already moved on for, after completing the foundation program to the diploma program and of course now the, today we are launching the direct entry to lateral entry to diploma program for those who are possibly already employed or uh, you know have got other degrees but want to learn uh, programming or want to learn data science things like that and uh, we have to you know we are very hopeful that this, these diplomas will be very uh, attractive and useful to a large number of people um, the fee pricing is very, very reasonable, as you would have noticed, uh, uh, because, of course, we leverage uh, many, much of the support that we get from the government of India. Uh, we don't, uh, uh, you know, we don't have to, there are so many hidden costs which we don't have to recover. So uh, all those benefits naturally flow to every citizen of this country. So basically, the fees are quite modest. And uh, uh, we look forward to the first batch of students who will uh, embark on this journey with us starting uh, November uh, with the qualifier in uh, December and then uh, the program starting in January. Um, first batch in any new institution, even brick and mortar institutions, when you start a new IIT, when you start a new NIT, etc., is special. The first batch uh, goes through some difficulties because everybody is learning on the job, but they also get very special attention because usually they are smaller in size and uh, everybody, you know, Everybody is that much more careful and watchful, all teachers, all uh, program managers, uh, right from the director down. So first batches, if you ask any of them after they graduate, you know, alumni, our own first batch, they all think it is the greatest time, you know, the best, the best first batch had the best uh, sort of uh, attention, even though some things may have been missing at that time. So um, I want to congratulate all those who are going to be in the first batch uh, and uh, look forward to exciting uh, journey with you. And we hope uh, by the end of uh, 2022 to actually be handing out quite a few of these diplomas. Thank you very much. Vignesh. Uh, thanks, Professor Baskar. Uh, thanks for your continued support and the kind words. Uh, you have been helping us with uh, designing and coming up with this diploma. So we are grateful for that. So uh, next, we would like to introduce uh, our guest of honor, Mr. Tirumala Rohi. So uh, Mr. Tirumala Rohi is, uh, has 24 years of experience and is currently serving as the senior vice president and also the head of education, training and assessment unit of Infosys. So he's an uh, apt person to be involved here. As uh, Professor Andrew already mentioned, he has been very actively involved with NPTEL and uh, also with the online programs. Uh, he is an expert in business analysis, business intelligence, and software project management, among many other fields. Uh, during his tenure at Infosys, he has managed many vital client relationships like uh, Fidelity, Ameriprise, Citi, uh, DTCC, etc. So uh, he's 
so now he has taken on the additional role of uh, the head of the education uh, training and assessment as well. So I invite our guest of honor, Mr. Tirumala Arohi, to share a few words uh, at this event. Thank you. Thank you, Vignesh. And uh, thanks, Professor Andrew, for inviting me. It's really a great honor to be with Professor Anil Sahasrabude and uh, Professor Baskar on especially a wonderful event like this where you are launching a wonderful program to acquire a diploma in both programming and data science. You know, from industry perspective, last few years has been extremely interesting, right? Uh, there's always this debate of skills versus degrees, whether universities are doing enough, uh, not just in India, but across the world. And many of us in the industry were looking at how do we kind of strengthen these concepts of uh, what is really needed from industry perspective, the skills versus uh, uh, degrees debate. Uh, unfortunately, the debate has actually taken many different shapes, right? Sometimes people started to kind of trivializing what the degrees are and started emphasizing more and more on skills, uh, forgetting the fact that, you know, extremely important to have a focused foundational program along with degree coming in because that is what will actually set the foundation for your career and uh, lifelong being a lifelong learner. So what I'm actually excited to be uh, in this event, especially is the fact that uh, IIT has already basically looked into this aspect. Uh, uh, national education policy, the new national education policy was a fantastic uh, initiative, especially in 2020 when it was launched. Most of us in industry were extremely excited to see that, you know, there is that flexibility, there is that approach towards micro credentialing at the same time, having multiple entry and exit points uh, to enable the students to benefit from what actually uh, the academic world can do. What I'm really again excited is you have taken two important things that all of us uh, in industry need, irrespective of whichever industry, even though I'm representing IT industry, if you look at the way that business is getting transformed, everyone, irrespective of whatever sector they are in, they are looking at both uh, programming, basic programming skills, which will allow you to kind of do things where you can automate your basic stuff. Uh, you don't have to be dependent on a lot of uh, uh, technology support team or anything like that. And then there is this data science, especially with the volume of data that is getting kind of captured. How do you basically create more and more insights using data science uh, as a basic lever? And how do you basically leverage it? So what you are going to do in, in effect really helps a lot of industries uh, who are looking at acquiring talent. I think uh, Professor Basket talked about uh, how it is important to make uh, employee friendly or employable uh, friendly kind of uh, students and a job ready kind of talent is needed and that's fantastic actually so congratulations to all of you who have been involved and uh, yeah. Professor Anil thanks for your sponsorship in anything that is actually helping industry and academia kind of look at together and together building the talent of the future what we also realized is the fact that this is something as uh, initially professor andrew talked about it is not just for uh, basically the undergraduate students, I what I like is the fact that even working professionals can take benefit of this, which means uh, many of us in the industry can encourage our employees to go and start looking at um, acquiring this because they are already doing some of the work. And as you articulated, instead of one year kind of a program, you are given the flexibility to kind of make schedule itself a little bit more amenable to people who can fast track their learning. And you, you have also given flexibility to people who think um, they may need more time to kind of uh, learn and uh, get the degree. So that's another phenomenal thing. And I believe that many of the industries can benefit from this. From Infosys, we'll be more than happy to kind of encourage our own employees. And with the initiative that we launched recently called Infosys Springboard, where we are trying to kind of open up uh, the possibility of digital literacy for uh, anyone in India, we will obviously encourage them as well to benefit from it as well as leverage some of the things that we have put it uh, out in open for them. So huge congratulations and uh, looking forward to many more initiatives, uh, especially from a August uh, institution like uh, IIT Madras, where we really want to see how we can further collaborate and uh, possibly offer in the coming days uh, a joint diploma program. Uh, and that kind of leads to multiple multi credentials that they can acquire and as Professor Andrew, you articulated, it can also help them over a period of time get a degree, which is going to be an extremely important uh, foundation for every lifelong learner uh, in the country.
So this is going to be interesting and uh, I'm really looking forward to see how many other institutions are going to come up with similar initiatives. You have also made it very cost friendly. I think that is an another phenomenal thing because um, on sideline we do watch a lot of commercial programs happening where the same kind of program obviously is charged in huge uh, monetary value and you have taken away that friction. I think removing that friction of uh, any kind of uh, social status, uh, um, any student coming from any social status should not be deprived of the good education. And again, uh, thanks for doing that and congratulations and best wishes for the program. Thanks, Professor. Uh, thanks, Mr. Trumula Arohi. So uh, these were inspiring and encouraging words. We look forward to engaging with uh, Infosys and other industries, and hopefully we'll be able to uh, build joint programs in the future as well, as you were indicating. Uh, thank you for your kind words. Uh, next, we would like to invite our chief guest, uh, Professor Anil Sahasrabhude, to address the audience. Uh, thank you, Vignesh. Uh, good morning to all of you. Namaskar. Vanakkam uh, also. And, and uh, coming from uh, IIT Madras, this very important initiative, Dr. Bhaskar Ramurthy, I must compliment you for taking the leap forward much before the new national education policy came. I think uh, both AICT also is doing exactly the similar thing and most of those things which we were doing for the last four years have found place in the new national education policy. So congratulations to IIT Madras, uh, the entire team led by Dr. Bhaskar. Uh, but Andrew, then uh, Professor Pratap, Vignesh, and uh, there is a big support team which has been uh, working behind the scene and they all do this contribution. So congratulations to all of them. Uh, we have uh, Thirumala Arohi, Vice President, very senior man uh, from the industry, from Infosys. And uh, we at AICT also are working very closely with uh, the entire, uh, what you say, educational content which Infosys has developed by itself and which they have procured from some of the top agencies like uh, even uh, Stanford's uh, Coursera and students are going to get it free of cost. I, I think this is empowering for our students. And as far as these two courses which are launched today are concerned, uh, a precursor to that uh, in one of the IIT Council meetings, uh, there was a talk about exit uh, once uh, a student joins, you know, sometimes this four-year program goes very difficult for some students. And if they are not able to complete all the credits, they will not get a degree. They don't get anything. Why can't we give a BSc degree? You know, that was a lot of uh, deliberations were there. There were uh, for and against, you know, statements. But ultimately, not only that part that was also inculcated, but more importantly, students joining directly online programs of BSc in data science and programming has really started helping students who were not able to make the mark and come into IIT system. Now they have got an opportunity which has been created through this. Now going forward, why only BSc even diploma? And uh, not necessarily a long time one, but a shorter one of one year duration and which can be easily completed even in eight months duration. That means almost like four months a semester. So it is about eight months means two semester program where they have already put in either one of the degrees like BA, BCom, BSc, or even not completed, but have done only two years of that and they can join in and then are capable of getting a diploma. And uh, I think like our, uh, in the past, we used to talk about three R's, you know, reading, writing, and arithmetic. So like that, in the new world, probably data science and programming will become the order of the day. It should come in the school education itself. And already in uh, CBSC, they have introduced AI and programming uh, at the level of 8th, 9th, 10th standards. And when the new education policy is fully rolled out, and uh, we have a system which will be replaced by 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 system instead of the present 10 plus 2. I'm sure uh, the formative years may be in the mother tongue for reading, writing skills. But as soon as they come to the level of sixth standard, they start learning skills. You know, skilling is very important. And these could be hard skills, these could be soft skills, these could be skills which are based on computer science and related areas like AI, IoT, machine learning, robotics, 3D printing, blockchain. I think these are the things which students will start learning right from sixth standard. But that will take a little while, you know, maybe three, four years down the line. But uh, something which one can start learning right now is what IIT Madras has started. And uh, 
you know, Tirumala, uh, you were telling that how many other institutions will follow suit. You know, that is more important. Uh, we have such a huge population, and the new national education policy talks about increasing the gross enrollment ratio in the higher education from the present 27% to 50% in the next five years. And all of this is not possible through the brick and mortar industry. You know, that kind of a thing is going to be very expensive. Land is also expensive. Land is not available in the first place. Even if somewhere land is available, there are environmental clearance problems, so you cannot build a building. And therefore, what all we can do with the use of technology is what is going to be important in the coming years. And that's why to increase GER, you know, this is one of the most important uh, initiatives which has been undertaken by uh, you know, IIT Matas. Now, I would like to also tell the listeners who are there from probably different faculty, principals, and students who are attending this particular program. Uh, there are a lot of empowering things which we have been doing in AI City as well. I, I would like to briefly touch upon them because sometimes these are the areas which uh, people are not aware and therefore sometimes they ask questions, you know, nothing is being done, nothing is being done, but without knowing that something is being already done. And therefore this is very important. Almost something similar to what is your program with low cost, you know, about uh, 67,000 for the full fee. But there are concessions for people with lower income, there are further concessions for further lower income groups, and also concessions for our brothers and sisters from disadvantaged sections of the society, SC, ST, OBC, uh, at a much lower cost. I think this is what is what is known as inclusive growth of uh, technical education uh, to the roots, you know, maybe a tribal area, maybe a remote rural area. How we empower is very, very important. And this is what uh, the policy also talks about. And this is always there in our minds. You know, we have never taken education as a business model. It is always not for profit, be it from the private entity or the government entity. And therefore, the right kind of fees which have been pitched are very, very important. A similar exercise which we did was called as National Educational Alliance for Technologies. So it is called NEET. And we had now NEET 1.0 to NEET 2.0, and more than about 100 products from different companies are onboarded. And we all go through what we know as a blind review of the product without knowing the name of the company, only about the product. And once the product is having value, and then we start evaluating whether they have tax regime, maintenance, all of that, you know, which compliances of the government are required to be done, because we should not onboard something which is shady. And that's why we do that at the second level and the third level in deep, we look at the product, whether it really achieves the thing which they are claiming to be. And then depending on the pricing that they have, we don't negotiate the price, the price is that of the company, but whatever is the price, if it is given the return on investment of the student, we accept that as a product and onboard it. And we have about 100 plus such products. And they are all on all variety of uh, not just data science and uh, the programming skills, but they are there in variety of other domains of uh, industry 4.0 related subjects, right from robotics to uh, various types of programming languages to everything. And they are essentially on AI based. You know, that is another interesting area which most startups have done. These are all young startups from not necessarily even IITs. Some of them coming from tier two, tier three cities have created a startup and they have created a product which is AI based. Uh, what it does is uh, they will conduct a test on a particular course that they want to offer. And depending on the level of learning that you have, they will direct you, guide you through the process of learning and the end product or the outcome of the program would be the same. So someone may complete it, you know, rightly said in this program also, it's a one year program, but can be completed in eight months. So in NEET also, if someone is already knowing some of these things, which he has learned through an open source platform, then why should we take longer time? So that he may be able to pay the fees and get it done. And uh, someone may do it in two months, someone in eight months, someone in two years. You know, this flexibility is also built in into NEET 1 and NEET 2.0. Uh, the new education policy exactly says the same thing. You talk about giving diplomas for exiting at some interval, or at the same time, these diplomas, which uh, are going to be given by IIT Madras uh, for data science and uh, also in computer programming, if these candidates want to pursue full-fledged engineering program later, and it may be a B.Tech program or a B.E. program in some college, 
then there is a lateral entry directly into the second year should be possible. If they have missed out on some of the courses, you know, this created a you know a lot of furore in, in the media when AICT said that uh, for entry into engineering program, you don't necessarily require only physics, chemistry, maths. There are 14 subjects which we identified and if you have passed through any of those three subjects, you can enter. But you cannot get away without studying mathematics. You know, mathematics is the core and without that, no one can progress. Similarly, physics. And in some courses, chemistry may not be required. Some courses, uh, biology may be required as mandatory. So we have said, whatever you have not done in your 11th and 12th grade, you must do it when you enter into an engineering program. And so here, if your diplomas are coming from BA and BCom, and they are now having data science and uh, programming skill sets, but they have not done mathematics good enough because they have come from BA or BCom background. They must be in a position to do that maths, that physics, that chemistry, which is required for doing some engineering program and then continue. And that is the flexibility which the new education policy talks about. And this is empowering because someone at the level of, uh, uh, in the new policy, at the level of eighth standard, it very categorically says there is nothing like arts, commerce, science streams that exist beyond eighth standard. You know, all will be common. You know, a student of uh, physics can take music and if, if a student of chemistry may take psychology. You know, these are the combinations are possible. And at a young age of eighth standard, if someone has not taken mathematics or a chemistry, we should not turn the doors against him that you cannot come into engineering is what is the philosophy that we have adopted. But anyway, yeah, gradually people have come to know of this and a lot of uh, explanation we had to do uh, about the reasons and all that. This is one part. Then uh, in order to encourage students from rural background, those who have been studying in their mother tongue to come to engineering, and an easy flow into the normal routine English medium classes in all these places. Uh, we have started translating. Uh, IIT Madras was doing it. I think Pratap was there leading this team uh, along with uh, Harida, uh, you know, many others uh, in IIT Madras. And some of these courses of first year are already translated. Some of the second year courses are getting translated from the swim. But at the same time, uh, in the policy, when it is said higher education may be permitted in regional languages, AICT jumped in and we have created an AI-based translation tool, which is about 80-85% accurate, similar to what actually Google Translator or Microsoft Translator does, but it is one step ahead. You know, in most of these books, which are there in English, if you have to translate, the text can be translated, but we have a lot of pictures, we have a lot of figures, we have a lot of tables, and these, when they are translated into the other language, should appear in the same format, same styling, same fonts. Uh, and the uh, viewer, when he reads that in any language, should get the same uh, experience as that of in English. And that is what we have developed. And not only that, PDF files also can be done. I think uh, great work has been done. And uh, fortunately, all of this is being done by undergrad uh, interns. Second year, third year interns are doing it under the supervision of one Chandrasekhar Buddha who is working with us here. So I think there are lots of challenges as, uh, uh, you know, Bhaskar pointed out, initial batches always have problems. And I am having that experience. You know, Bhaskar, what you said, I could relate very quickly because my first job after my PhD was in Nairist in Arunachal Pradesh, in the first institute with the modularity, you know, certificate program, diploma program, degree program of two years duration each after class 10. And the first one or two batches, the number of students were less, number of faculty were less. We were like a family bond, you know, and they used to come to our houses for, uh, you know, lunch, dinner, sometimes the hostel mess was not working on Diwali or Holi or any other occasion. And, and the bondage remains today. You know, after 35 years also, they, they write to us actually. And that is what is a Guru Shishya Parampara, which we talk about in Indian ancient traditional knowledge system. So that is one. Secondly, in IIT also was the same thing. You know, IIT Guwahati was my second job. Again, uh, in new IIT, started in 1995 with nothing, no land, nothing from a temporary premises. Students were traveling, we were traveling in the same bus. So kind of environment that we enjoy with all difficulties. Probably the kind of equipment and uh, the exposure they needed was not given. But they came off very well in life because they struggled. You know, struggle is very important. Hard work is very important, both from faculty front as well as students. So in this program also, there will be teething trouble, no problem. 
we, and these students will adjust to that and they will be you know probably great entrepreneurs subsequently you know, they, they, the, those who go through difficulties will become entrepreneurs <laughs> that is the idea which we have so i thank you very much for inviting me on this particular occasion and uh, giving this opportunity to speak to the audience uh, and i'm really excited you know what iit madras has started must be started by many other institutions in the years to come and let us increase our gr very soon to 50% thank you very much thanks a lot uh, professor shubhudeya i personally interacted with you i think for close to 7 8 years now in various capacities i really have to say the kind of support you, know, you have given us uh, nobody has uh, given us it's a pleasure to go to delhi usually because we see you first and then we go see yeah. so <laughs> that's great to see i i am also from iit system that is also one thing i enjoy <laughs> Okay, so that uh, draws us close to the end of the program. Uh, I'm really happy to invite uh, Vignesh to propose a vote of thanks. Uh, Vignesh, over to you. Thanks, Andrew. So uh, we have now come to the final part of the ceremony. It is actually my privilege to thank everyone who has uh, come to this event and uh, made this event possible. So I would like to first thank our chief guest, Professor Anil Sahasrabhande, and our guest of honor, Mr. Trimala Arohi. So both of them uh, readily accepted our invitation and took time out of their busy schedule to attend this event. So thank you, sirs. So I also want to thank our uh, director, Professor Bhaskar Ramurthy, for his continued support, encouragement, and guidance in building these programs. So I would like to thank uh, Professor Pratap Haridas, the dean, and uh, Professor Andrew Tangaraj, so both of them have been uh, working uh, tirelessly on developing these online programs and uh, also building the NPTEL MOOCs. So uh, thank you for all your efforts. I'm sure the country is better off for all the efforts that uh, the both of you have put in. So uh, as everyone knows, no event or program can be successful without the people who dedicate their time and resources for uh, ensuring that the event uh, happens as planned. So uh, none of what has happened today would have been possible without the efforts of uh, Mrs. Bharti, Mr. Balraju, Mrs. Ambika, and uh, Mr. Rajesh. I would also like to thank uh, Mrs. Kamala, Sudarsha, Tejesh, Kodai, and Jai Krishnan. So uh, there are many others who contributed uh, behind the scenes uh, whose names I, I might not have mentioned, but I would like to thank each and every one who has contributed for this program and for this event directly and indirectly. So finally, I thank the audience who have joined us and uh, have helped us make this uh, program a success. So we look forward to having you as part of our program. So please do visit our website, learn about this program, and uh, we look forward to having you uh, as part of an IIT Madras family. Thank you, one and all. Thanks. Thanks to everyone. I think we'll stop being live. Uh, can we? Balaji, can you confirm? Ah, yes, I'm starving. <laughs>